Welcome back to High Point Land Company. This week we're going to talk about what to think about when thinking about selling a piece of land real estate. So selling a farm is a huge decision. We understand that it means the world to the clients that we get to sell property for. Whether it's inherited from an estate or a piece of property that you're selling looking to get out of land or a property that you're selling in order to get into another bigger or smaller piece of land, there's many reasons that people consider selling a piece of land. So we get asked all the time, what should I I think about when I start thinking about selling land and I have four topics that we're gonna cover in this video and the fourth one is one that you might not have thought about that'll be at the end that is that is really something that you should consider when you're thinking about selling a piece of land so the first thing you want to do when you're thinking about selling a piece of land are preparing documents documents that you have regarding the tile system maps of the trail system contracts that you might have with a tenant uh, that's a farm tenant a home tenant a building tenant a hunting lease tenant uh, any contracts that you've signed for logging purposes or windmills or cell phone towers or drainage districts anything that might be a contract or a document that you have for the property. Also trail camera photos of wildlife on the property, harvest photos that you've got with ducks or deer or fish or anything that you might have harvested on a recreational property. And then any history you have on a tillable farm with fertilizer maps or any other maps or contracts or documentation that you have and putting together a nice folder uh, that just has all those documents. They could be simple pictures printed off or maps that you have uh, in a file for the farm based on the farm's history. Also any improvements, wells, septics, building improvements or repairs or receipts that you have documenting anything that you've done over the course of history on this property or a family member that you might have, that is a great place to start. If a family member has documents and you've taken that and taken that to the next level or kept all those documents, compiling all those documents so you know what you have and what's been done to the land is definitely step one. Step number two is definitely starting to talk to professionals in the area that are gonna help you out to learn more about the market. You might live in the market and think that you know a lot about the market and realize that there might be a whole new buyer pool for the property that you did not even know that existed. So if you talk to a professional, start with a land real estate agent. A land real estate agent compared to a normal real estate agent is going to be specialized in land sales. They're going to know about land auctions, about sealed bid land sales, about traditional listings, about other alternative ways to sell property. They're going to know about 1031 exchanges. They're going to know about timber or tillable land. Um, they're going to know about solar leases, wind contracts, cell phone towers, rural property in all shapes and forms. So a land real estate agent compared to just a residential real estate agent or a commercial real estate agent is going to be a specialized individual that's going to answer a lot of those questions for you. Those folks are gonna be telling you what your land is worth, what your timber could be worth on the property, what the property should be renting for, how tile systems are going to affect the prices, how your fertility is going to affect the price, and they're gonna tell you the range from high to low, what to expect for a property like yours in this market. At that point, that gives you a good idea of what the land is worth, so you can go talk to your accountant, your financial advisor, and your attorney if you have uh, the property in a trust or the property's in a partnership with other partners or family members and uh, you want to dissolve that partnership to sell the land. So the real estate agent I recommend being first that specializes in land to give you a, a value of the property and then take that value to your accountant, to your financial advisor, to your attorney to make sure that you have those ducks in a row so there's no surprises down the road of what you're going to have to pay in capital gains tax how to sever the relationship with a partner or how to exit a trust and sell the property properly as well as what you're going to do with the money afterwards. So number two, definitely starting the conversations with the professionals. And number one, having the documents in order in advance of talking to those professionals. Number three is going to be property preparation. So the real estate agent is going to be able to tell you what to do on the property based on how the property is going to be shown as well as how buyers are going to perceive your property. Now, when you look at doing a property cleanup, 
We're talking about in drives being wider so the right size equipment can get into the property, making sure the tile system is in order so there's not standing water, making sure grass and trees are cut back so a branch isn't hitting somebody looking at the property in the face or poking kids. Uh, we want to make sure that experience of showing the property is excellent. We always also want to make sure any drone photography or photography on the property is excellent or setting up trail cameras on the property, making sure that there's wildlife there. We want to make sure equipment is cleaned up or put all in one place so it's not scattered about. We want to make sure any hazardous waste or burn pits or anything to do with livestock is safe on the property. The fencing's good. The showing instructions are good. There's many, many things on that list for property preparation based on who's going to buy in the current market and who's going to view the property in the current market to make sure there's no liability uh, and to make sure the property has its best foot forward when marketing uh, comes in to sell that property and to make sure that you understand what things need to be done on the property in advance of selling it to put its best foot forward, much like uh, painting the walls or decluttering a home if you were to go sell a home, for instance. So there's some things that are on that preparation. So I told you the fourth thing you might not think about when it comes to selling land. And the fourth thing uh, catches a lot of sellers by surprise when they have a long list of projects. So the fourth thing to talk about when preparing to sell a farm or a piece of land real estate is definitely asking the real estate professional how the property would sell currently in its current state versus a list of all the things they would recommend you clean up on the property. When you start looking at equipment on a property or in drives being too small or a septic system that needs to be replaced or a long list of other things that need to happen on a property, when you ask the real estate agent to make you a list of all the things they would recommend to get the best price for the property, also to give you a price if those things were not improved. We've sold many, many properties for people that don't have a cabin or a home uh, cleaned up or uh, taken down or prepared uh, in order to sell the property and we happen to have a buyer that owns a business that finishes homes or cabins or somebody that uh, owns an excavating or a bulldozing earth moving company and they would prefer a property that has washouts and has small in drives and they're not going to necessarily take the market price of having that work completed off the purchase price. We've also had equipment uh, laying all over properties. We had one property that had over 90 semis of scrap removed from the property. That property we recommended that the seller take the property uh, and clean those things off, but we recommended a scrap company to do that. So they made money in the removal. The last thing we want to do is tell a seller to do a bunch of work on a farm and have that farm sell for the same price if they wouldn't have done any improvements in the property or any cleanup because the market is that hot or we have a list of buyers that want to buy property like that because they have some competitive market advantage in a business that they have that they would prefer to keep their employees busy doing that kind of work on the property. Again, our goal at the end of all real estate transactions is to not only sell the property for the most money for the client and get it to its high point, but to have the seller have the best experience possible as well as achieve the highest net number at the end of the day. So if that means they have to go spend a bunch of money just to achieve this price, we want to know that in advance to make sure that if we can save the seller the time and money in cleaning up a property or doing any changes whatsoever to the property, we're looking at the highest net number at the end of the day for the client. And if we can save them that property cleanup or that property preparation and the time and, and uh, money that that takes to clean that property up, we want to talk about those things and give them that benefit in advance.